we've sort of talked about area between two z-scores already in the sense of when we go all the way to the left, like negative 100, or all the way to the right to the positive 100, or even when we're talking about between negative 1 and 1, um, negative 2 and 2, and negative 3 and 3. But a lot of times we will be doing z-scores, um, percents between two different z-scores. So let's start with this example. We have weights of newborn children in the U.S. can use the model, the normal model, 7.5 comma 1.25. So I've got the 7.5 on my um, normal distribution. A newborn weighs less than 5.5 pounds is classified as low birth weight. What is the probability that a newborn weighs between 6 and 7 pounds? So first of all, let's look for a z-score for a 6-pound newborn. And I go 6 minus 7.5 over 1.25. That's negative 1.2. Okay, so looking at that, I can find that percent is from uh, to the left of 6.0 here. So the probability that a kid weighs less than that is 11.51%. I can also calculate the z-score, and there it is marked right there. I can also calculate the z-score for a 7-pound newborn, and it's negative 0.4. When I look up the z-score there, it's 3.3446. Uh, so that's this area, and it's going actually all the way. You see how there's some yellow here? It's going from this point all the way to the left. All right, and so the probability a baby weighs less than 7 pounds is 0.3446. Now, that represents this whole area, and that represents this area. If I'm using the table, <clears throat> which normally you don't have to do, but it's still good to under help you understand this, um, I can say that this area right here, between 6.0 and 7.0, would be this big percent minus this green area. So the yellow is the whole thing, and we're subtracting out the green space, and that gives me 0.2295. Now, most of the time, you're going to be using a calculator to do your two z-scores. So you're going to press second and distribution to find the normal CDF, and you scroll down and hit enter, and you enter your lower z-score and a comma. So we said our lower z-score was negative 1.2, then I have comma, now I put the high z-score, which is negative 0.4, and, a com and the parentheses, and hit enter. And you'll notice it gave me the same answer as what I did with the other. So it's probably easier to do it on your calculator, but I also recommend you drawing and shading. So we'll do a couple more just plain old naked z-score problems without any word problems associated with them. And if I asked you to determine the probability um, or the percent that's between negative 2.75 and 1.5, that's this green area. On the calculator, it's super duper easy. It would just be negative 2.75 to negative 1.5, and it calculates it for you. If I wanted to do the probability that it's less than negative 2.75, that's this yellow area here. And on the calculator, I'm starting all the way to the left, so I'm going to use negative 100 to negative 2.75, and I get 30 uh, ten thousandths. If I want to determine the probability that it's just to the left of this line, that would be, I can use the calculator, negative 100 to negative 1.5, and get 0.0668. But also think that if I added this green and this yellow, wouldn't that be the same? Or if I took the green, which is um, basically, if I took this value and I stripped out the yellow, that would give me the top there. So there are a couple different ways to look at it. Now there is a way to use your calculator to calculate percents without actually calculating z-scores. Um, this is okay doing every once in a while, but honestly, on your AP test, they expect you to know what a z-score is. So I'm going to show this with some trepidation. The function is called normal CDF, and the only difference is instead of z-scores, we have x1 and x2, and then we have the mean in x units and the standard deviation in x units. So there are no z-scores there. So you press second in distribution just like before, and you scroll down and hit enter just like before. Now instead of putting the z-score, you're putting the first x, and then you're putting the second x, 10.5 to 14.4, and your comma. And now you're going to enter the mean, 
and the standard deviation and then press enter for the percentage between the two values.